You know, when I'm sitting here with my kitty cat, Lazy Cash, I'm thinking, uh, what are my regrets? What regrets do I have when it comes to my involvement with the infinite banking concepts? And first and foremost, like, do you all know what the infinite banking concepts are? I mean, little lazy cash does. It's essentially the process of you taking back the banking functions in your life. Now, he may not understand that as a kitty cat, but here's what he does understand. He knows when he's got to go to sleep, he knows when he wants to eat, and he knows when he wants to be lazy, which is why he's called lazy cash. So he's got defined rules in his existence that he follows day in and day out. That's just the life of a cat. But the life of a human is a lot more complex. And the life of a human has to also come back to those habits that we build. So when I think about the infinite banking concepts, okay, what is it? It was pioneered by the late R. Nelson Nash in his book, Becoming Your Own Banker. It is literally a process, not a product. A lot of people, when I say infinite banking, they think it's whole life insurance, especially designed whole life, which yes, that's the machine we use to fund the banking process, but it is not the process. It's very simple. You see, lazy cash, Okay, he was nicknamed because we often talk about money that people have that is sitting lazy. Money in bank accounts, it's doing nothing, that's earning very little interest. Money that might be sitting in the walls of your house. Yeah, we would call that equity in your house that, you know, maybe you got a house that's paid down, maybe your house is appreciated. You got lazy money sitting in the walls of your house. How do you get that money to work? How do you make that money go work for you? Why isn't your money working for you? Is it because you're so caught up in, oh my God, a scarcity mindset, I gotta have an emergency fund, I gotta have this money sitting there. If I don't, this, that. Your money wants to work for you. But most people, all they do is they go out and trade hours for dollars. And they do this day in and day out. And most people can't even tell you why they get up and go to work. Or if you ask them, their answer would be, well, that's what everybody else does. Because I got bills to pay. That is not why you get up and go to work. And that should never be why somebody applies what I'm gonna teach you about the infinite banking concept. It should be because you wanna take back control. You wanna take back control of the banking functions in your life. In other words, you wanna be the bank. Well, that's what we're gonna talk about. So let's dive in to what regrets I have about my journey in the infinite banking concept. So as we dive into my regrets with the infinite banking concept, I, I gotta first give you one example of the infinite banking concept. So remember it's process, okay? Process of taking back the banking functions in your life. What banking functions do you give up in your life? This is most people out there. Well, we go out, we work for money, we get a paycheck, we take that money, we put it into a bank. Then from the bank, what do we do? We borrow money from the bank and we pay those loans, those credit cards, those bills. That's what we do, that's the cycle. We work for money, we take the money that we make, we buy things or borrow to buy things that maybe we need, maybe we don't, maybe we're just trying to impress people, doesn't matter, that's the cycle. But you can break that cycle because that cycle is just like being on a hamster wheel. So you ever see a little gerbil on a hamster wheel running and 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 running? They never seem to fly off though. I never get it. They got some control, but they're continuously running and they don't really know why. That's your life because you're continually running to make money, make more money, and then you're going out and as you make more, you spend more. And things that were once luxuries now become necessities and that's just a cycle. But you see, it doesn't have to just end because I want you to make more money. I want you to go out there and buy nicer. I want you to have bigger houses. I want you to have faster cars. I want you to have all the things you want. And I don't want you to have to just say, oh, no more Starbucks for you. Yep, you gotta drink coffee at home because you can't spend $3 on a coffee. Listen, I want you to buy as much Starbucks as you can. But in order to do that, we gotta change something. Change is part of life. If you don't change, your life will never ever blossom into anything. Everything around us is changing. Everything around us is in motion. The air is blowing, the snow is falling, the rain is falling. Everything's in motion. Why do we sit stagnant? Why do we let fear keep us where we're at? A lot of times, it's because that's what we've been taught. A lot of times because we have been told at an early age that our dreams are shit, that our dreams can never happen, that they're outside the realm of reality, but they're not. And the same is true when it comes to money. You see, all you need to do is get what I'm gonna teach you about the infinite banking concept. You need to understand the process. And once you understand the process and apply it in your life, all things come true. And I mean that wholeheartedly. 
I mean that because I've made so many mistakes, that I've failed so many times that I've learned from those mistakes. The infinite banking concept will allow you to take back all the money you're giving away. Think about this, just plant this idea in your head. All the bills that you pay every month, I want you to think about all the dollar amounts. Every credit card that you write a check to every month, I want you to think about all the cars that you pay for every month, the student loans you pay for every month, the mortgage you pay for every month, the lines of credit you pay for every month, the furniture loans you pay for, am I hitting home? I want you to think about all those. And what I want you to do is I want you to just tally up in your mind or on a piece of paper how much that is every single month that you write a check for that leaves your household, not your expenses, primarily just your debts. How much is it, folks? Is it 1000 a month? Is it 2000 5000 10 Could it be $20,000 a month that you write checks to somebody else's bank for? Now, imagine a fairy tale land where all that money that you write on those checks goes into your bank. Imagine it. That's possible, folks. It's very possible. By applying the infinite banking concept, all the money you pay to somebody else's bank could be then re-diverted back into your bank, but it's not fast. It's not easy. Well, it's actually pretty easy, but it takes you changing the way you think, and it also changes your habits because you've got to stop giving up control of your money to somebody else's bank. You've got to stop putting money in everybody else's bank, put money in 401ks, give money to advisors. You're giving up control. Somebody else is in control of your money. You need to take back that control. And then once you take back the control, you need to apply it through this process and be diligent and consistent. And if you do that, you will succeed every single time. So let's take a roll back in time. My journey. So remember, I was a financial advisor. I started in Wall Street in 2003 with a New York City firm, a huge firm, I'm not gonna give the name. And it was a great experience. I remember I got my life and health licenses, I was pond scum, dialing in for dollars and passing any investment calls off to the guys in the corner offices. And that's just the way it was. And I loved it. But I also noticed some inefficiencies. I watched these really successful advisors that I was basically dialing for dollars for, and I watched how much money they made, but how little they put into it. Some of them worked harder than others, but they got there right around the time of the bell ringing and they were gone around 4.30 every day. And I started thinking, hey, you know what? If I just do what they're all unwilling to do, if I just do what all these other pond scum folks, which is the, they call it the new org, are not doing, I will have one of those offices sooner. I will make the money they're making sooner. That's exactly what I did. I changed my habits. I didn't like getting up early. I was in my 20s back then. I didn't like getting up early. I would go out at night and have fun with my friends, but I got up every morning. It was sucked. And I would come into the office by 7 a.m. and I would get all my work done so that when the bell rang, I could focus just on making money and doing what everybody else was undoing. When they left for lunch, I would work through lunch and people answered the phones and I started booking calls for myself. But you see, I didn't have my security license quite yet. I got my six and 63 shortly after, but then my seven came after that. So I couldn't sell the security, so I was still handing those off. But what I could sell, is life insurance, and that's exactly what I did. You see, I started calling on lunch. I started calling after 4.30 when everybody left, and I started getting appointments. I started with families and friends, and then I moved on, and I started going through all the business relationships I had, and I started actually patching it together, and I started then selling life insurance, mostly term, because that's what we were taught to sell. Sell term, it's cheap, it's easy. And I did, it's a lot of term. And every once in a while, people would be like, hey, you got any of that permanent life insurance? I'm like, yep, we got some of that whole life, we got some of that universal life, and oh, we even got these really cool variable universal lives, which I could sell after I got my 663. So I started selling all these products, and I started buying them. My first policy was a whole life insurance policy. Thank God. And it was 2004. I put 240 bucks a month, and I remember back then thinking, this is a monumental amount of money a month. I don't know how I'm gonna do this, but I did it. I set the idea in my head and I did it. I started another one two years after that, $570 a month. That was, whew, how am I ever gonna afford this? And I kept doing that over and over. But you see, around that time, actually when we got to 2006, I had learned about real estate. I'd been doing a lot of other businesses. I had my retail stores for skateboard snowboarding. I was a pro snowboarder, but I was also at the core a financial advisor. And now I was security licensed. But in 2006, I started flipping houses and I needed some cash to flip houses. The very first one I did in Gasport, New York. I remember I needed cash for renovations. I took a loan from that whole life insurance policy and I, use that to renovate the house. 
And then I also took loans for my 401k to do that. So what is a big regret? So this all sounds pretty cool, right? I'm using my policies, I'm taking loans, I'm using it to buy real estate and flip houses. But you see, I knew nothing about the infinite banking concept. Had no concept of what it was. Didn't know how to be my own bank, didn't know how to be in control. I was an advisor, I needed control of everybody else's money. But you see, had I known what I know now, I would have done all of it different. I would have used it all different. I would have designed that policy completely different because that was just a regular whole life. I had money in it, but it took years for that policy to have any cash value for me to use. I started in 04 and wasn't even able to take my first loan until 2006, and it was a small loan. So had I known what I know today, I would have designed the policy properly. I would have also set some rules. I would have built those habits earlier that when I take a loan from the policy and I use it in real estate, what I would have done is set up a repayment to the policy. I did not do that back then. I knew I had to pay the policy back, but I'm like, well, I'll pay it back when I sell the house, which is fine. But I should have actually put it in writing because when something is in writing, whether it's you literally lending money to yourself, you look in the mirror and you're like, hey, Chris, uh, I need to borrow uh, like 10 grand for this flip. And in the mirror, your mirror looks back at you and says, okay, uh, how much do you want to pay in interest? Uh, I don't know, how does 6% sound? Sure, that sounds great. How long would you like to borrow it for? I think the flip's gonna take about three, four months. Uh, so let's do 12 months to be safe. No problem. Would you like me to draw up the paperwork? No, I'll draw up the paperwork. No, 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 I got it. I'll do the paperwork. You see, you're just talking to yourself. You're the bank, you control the narrative. You control everything when you become the bank. But I didn't do that. It was just a loose cannon. Now, luckily it worked out, but it could have worked much better. So first regret, I wish I would have learned this sooner. Second regret, I wish I would have taken a little bit more risk. Now, what do I mean by risk? Because I don't like risk. I wish I would have challenged myself a little more. Instead of doing a $240 a month payment, which back then was a stretch, I should have went to the 500. I should have built the policy properly so that I had the flexibility to go lower, but strive for a higher amount. Challenge yourself, get yourself out of your comfort zone. And I did not. I went right into my little comfort zone. I said, I know I can do this. It's gonna to be tough, but I can do it. But I should have expanded that. I should have tried harder. Another big mistake. I should have spent more time learning. I spent so much time back then thinking I knew what I didn't know. I spent so much time back then getting an idea and going after it blindly without really just learning the proper steps that others have taken for faster success. I should have read Nelson Nash's Becoming Your Own Banker much sooner. Another regret, and this is maybe unique to me. I was a financial advisor. I had heard about people using whole life as a banking system. I'd heard about this very early on in my career, but I totally dismissed it because it just sounded too far outside the realm of, of possibility. And I should have just said, you know what? Maybe, just maybe there's something to this. And I should have seeked the answers, but instead I conformed. I conformed to what the company I was with told me to do. I just did as I was told. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am, no problem, I got this. And I went out there and I just sold what they wanted me to sell. When I should have carved my own path. You see, sometimes in life, we have to take the path less traveled. I didn't. I took the path most traveled. The financial advisor path that everybody took, same path, follow the rules, do these things, do this, and you will make whatever, a couple hundred thousand bucks, okay? Which was a lot of money back then. Now, I'm not saying it's not today, but what if I had blazed this path. What if back then, anytime in the early 2000s, I had learned the infinite banking concepts. I had learned from Nelson Nash. I had mentored with Nelson Nash. I had gotten on a plane and got out of my comfort zone and flew out and met the man, shook the man's hand, had him mentor me, had him taught me. Where would I be today? How many more lives could I have helped had I started just earlier with a little bit more money and got out of my comfort zone? This one might be the biggest regret. See, during that whole period of time when I was an advisor, when I was flipping houses and doing all this stuff, not using the infinite banking concept, I had a lot of debt. I was making payments every month to lots of credit cards, to lots of mortgages, to lots of things, car payments. Everybody else was getting my money. Sure, I kept making more money, but I was giving it away as fast as I was making it. Had I just learned 
what the infinite banking concept could have done by me paying off my debts using my own bank and recycling and recapturing the money. Remember the circle. Money starts on the left and that specially designed whole life goes over here, pays off the debts, lowest balance to highest. Take the amount that you were given the credit card, move it back over to the policy as a loan repayment. I would have been debt free way earlier, which means I would have saved probably hundreds of thousands in interest, maybe millions in interest, had I recaptured and recycled all the money I was giving away. And then there's cars. Holy smokes. I was an Audi guy, loved Audis. And I had lots of cars, 20, 30, maybe 100 different cars over that course of period of time. And every one of those cars was financed through a bank, mostly Cornerstone Federal Credit Union. I probably hold the record for the most car loans at that place. But every single one of those cars, guess what I did? I made a monthly principal and interest payment to somebody else's bank. How much money? How much money could I have made just in the cars? If I knew how to get all the money back for every one of those cars that I, I was buying and driving and enjoying. That's all I had to do, change one thing and add one step and I could have got all the money back for every one of those cars. And then when I sold the cars, that was just icing on the top. We could even take that one step further, flipping real estate. How much money did I pay out to other private lenders, to other banks, to other hard money lenders in interest that could have been paid to me? Now, that might have been premature because those were bigger dollar amounts, but like, listen, when you set your mind free and you start thinking, what if, you start to realize the mistakes you made. But you know what, here's, here's how I'm gonna wrap this. I just went over a couple mistakes. There's so many more. I have literally had the highest of the highs and the lowest of the lows. I have failed so many times. I, sometimes I wonder how did I even get where I'm at with all the times I failed. But I'll tell you what, the biggest regret I have of all is that I don't regret any of it. None of it. It's not a regret. Every one of those learning lessons, every one of those failures, every one of those things that I just said I regret not doing. So when you look at it all, the biggest regret wasn't a regret at all. It was all just my path, my journey. It was how I got where I'm at today. It's how I learned everything I know today because if I didn't fail, if I didn't screw all those things up, if I didn't learn the hard way, I could have never got here because every failure is the lesson to get you to the next level. So when you're going through your journey in life, when you're thinking about all the things from the past and all the things in the future, understand this, the past cannot be changed and the future doesn't exist. So why do you focus on the future that doesn't exist and the future that may never exist and why do you keep yourself buried? Why do you keep yourself living in fear because of the past which is gone and will never resurface, folks? I urge you to fail. I urge you to go out there and make mistakes. They're not gonna be easy, they're gonna be painful, but you are going to learn the most valuable lessons in that. So when you're thinking about regret, erase that word. As the famous Mr. Bob Ross would say, there are no mistakes. There are only happy accidents. Go out there and paint your happy accidents. Make the mistakes, learn faster, fail faster, do more, put yourself in places that challenges you to go outside your comfort. And just remember that four letter word, fear. It's not real. Unless it is a grizzly bear or a mountain lion chasing you, that's fear, run your ass off. Uh, but everything else is a made up thing that we've got in our mind that doesn't exist. Hold on a second, I don't want you to make a mistake. <laughs> this is important, because you will regret this if you don't do this. So let's just pause right now. See this thing right here? It says subscribe, hit that. Please, don't, don't miss this. And then right up top, there's a little bell. See this? That's right, smash that bell. You can slap it, you can backhand it, you can punch it, you can headbutt it. It doesn't matter what you do, just click the bell so you're notified every time I put new content out.